Good morning. Welcome back to Citizen TV. This is Debrek Show that brings you what you need to think about as you begin the day. My name is Sam Gituko. On this um, sixth day of February, I'm joined by two uh, legislators here. That is uh, Senator Samson Chiralge from Nandi County, Karebisana. And Mweshmua Gladys Wanga from Homa Bay County, Asante Sana, for making time for us. Asante Sana. We are hoping to be joined by Senator Mwaura, nominated Senator. We hope uh, uh, he does and when he does, he'll be here to make comments on different topics that are making headlines in the papers. And I want to begin with the standard. Matiangi warns CSAs on tenders and corruption. Uh, Chief Minister, uh, in quotes rather, uh, chairs arm of cabinet and gives 90-day ultimatum for completion of projects or exposure of bribe takers in government offices. That story is given coverage on page six. This is the very uh, first time that uh, he's chairing the full cabinet team. Uh, last week, I believe, he met a few um, cabinet secretaries uh, who also, some of whom sent um, their representative CSs or even PSs to th that uh, discussion. Uh, so that story is given coverage on page six uh, with the, a series of uh, the cabinet secretaries making their entry. And uh, Matiangi says that a complete stalled projects, that's an order from him, and contractors behind stalled projects have been ordered to complete them in 90 days or name the government officials they bribed if that is the reason for questionable contract uh, some variations. So we'll be talking about that uh, shortly. Still on the front page of um, the standard, you'll see that YC Plus may no longer be direct visit ticket. Uh, it is the third year, I believe, that you're having uh, C Plus and above. Every student who's called C Plus and above going to the university. But now there is a story there that is given coverage on page four of the standard saying that uh, that, that might change uh, in as far as uh, who gets admitted, saying that... Uh, uh, only 68,000 students were admitted to universities, while 57,000 were admitted to colleges last year, uh, despite uh, a figure of nearly uh, 80,000 that had qualified to join universities. We'll be looking at that shortly. Then on the front page of uh, the Daily Nation, you'll see that married women can inherit father's land. That is uh, a top story in landmark ruling. Judge asserts the entitlement of women to inherit the property of their fathers, starring debate on constitutional provisions and customary law as women lawyers load the ruling. Men's organization questions its motiva motivation. You can see that story on page three, which is going to uh, cause quite some uh, reaction based on the argument that uh, most ca uh, customs do not allow for that to happen. So we will see how that goes. And then still on the front page, you'll see that uh, uh, nurses strike suspended for two months. Union accuses Ministry of Labor of frustrating the implementation of uh, a 2017 deal, but Council of Governors wins round against striking medical workers. After court rules, they should go back to work pending outcome of negotiations. So, uh, the status of that uh, strike. So, let's begin with the top story that um, yesterday we saw Cabinet Secretary for Interior, Dr. Fred Matiang, and also the chairperson of the committee, a Cabinet Committee on Implementation of Development Projects and Communication, uh, chairing that meeting. We had that story from uh, Francis Gashuri. And now we see sort of uh, these statements. I, let me begin from the point of, um, do you think that now we'll uh, see quicker progress? I, 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 of course, many leaders, many persons have said that uh, this is going to streamline the operations of government. But do you think this is the uh, solution we've been looking for in as far as implementation of programs is concerned? Uh, thank you. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, the reason some of the government projects sometimes Mm -hmm. uh, do not talk of is because uh, of lack of financial uh, financial uh, from the national government. So you find most of the time uh, there the is some allegations. But of course, the president has uh, has said mm -hmm. that he wants some of these projects to move very fast because uh, we are remaining with three and a half years and uh, is building on his legacy on the big four agenda. Mm -hmm. So it was very important that uh, these projects are brought under one. Uh, consolidated so that it can be fast track. And I think for, for, for Wanainchi and as legislators, mm -hmm. it will be very exciting such that some of these projects affect especially issues to do with infrastructure and many <coughs> other projects that have been undertaken by the national government. Mm -hmm. These are good sign that uh, these things must be dealt with as soon as possible. Right. But I know the main challenge that comes uh, in terms of uh, uh, fast tracking of these projects most of the time is lack of financial or resources that are needed by contractors mm -hmm. to do. And, and I think uh, 
uh, also when some of these projects delay, also it makes room for corruption and graft and uh, lethargy in the government agencies. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think this order is, uh, is, is timely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we support the president so that uh, some of these things can be concluded in fullness of time and Kenyans can enjoy the, the service delivery that okay. is being provided. Okay. Yeah. So previously we have heard of uh, quite um, decrees or pronouncements by the president, but now for the first time we see a team that has been put in place to ensure that this happens. Do you think finally this is it? I think this is a very good decision by the president mm -hmm. because um, many projects have stalled, mm -hmm. you know, they're not moving. Mm -hmm. um, and this structure, the good thing about it is big, it begins at the very lowest level mm -hmm. and rises up all the way to the national level, which is chaired by CS Matiangi, mm -hmm. who's, who's, who's an effective CS so far, has, has proven his, his abilities. So mm -hmm. here, and, and, and the question he has uh, th that is said to have been raised is the issue of bribe-taking government officials, because sometimes you find that a tender is, let's say, for example, for the sake of argument, your tender is 10 million shillings. Mm -hmm. The people who are giving you the tender tell you you have to give us 2 million shillings or mm -hmm. 3 million shillings. Mm -hmm. That is just one set of people. Then another set tell you, oh, we are also here. We want, we are doing this and that. We want another 1 million. Mm -hmm. You remain with 6 million. You haven't started the project. Then you wonder what is your profit even mm -hmm. in that in that project and I think that is a concern right. facing many government projects because you have given so much money in mm -hmm. form of kickback or the 10% mm -hmm. or the 100% you know the analogy that uh, Honorable Raila gave at uh, Bomas of Kenya that the Nigerian minister said uh, can you see the road out there mm -hmm. and there was no road and he said 100% here because in some cases there's mm -hmm. so much money taken in kickbacks that mm -hmm. the project cannot move. So it is our hope mm -hmm. that through this monitoring mechanism, because mm -hmm. if people just go to cabinet every Thursday and so on, maybe there's no follow-up mechanism. Right. But through this follow-up mechanism, mm -hmm. it is our hope mm -hmm. that projects can actually mm -hmm. be concluded. Right. And, and, we, we, and we see projects moving. And Senator Chiragay points out the issues of budget, and the issues of budget are there. But I think the bigger issue is what is this kickback culture? Mm -hmm. What is this culture of people taking so much money from contractors mm -hmm. that sometimes the contract is not worth it or it is shoddily done or it is not completed? It just holds. There are people actually running away from projects. Right. You have been given a big project. You have given so much money mm -hmm. on kickback that you actually just run away and leave the project there because mm -hmm. you are unable to move. It is no longer profitable even for you. Okay. So I think if those issues can be streamlined, then it becomes, um, then it becomes the, way, the way to go. And I'm happy that all CSs have responded well mm -hmm. and are, are moving together in that same direction. And the president is very, very firm. Mm. And I, I really just want to urge him to remain as firm as, as he is. That if somebody does not want to work, you know, to Take a walk. Yeah. All right. And so we are joined by Senator Isaac, Isaac Maura, nominated Senator Karibu Sana. Uh, and thank you for making time for us. Though Leo met to Chenga. Leo Melala Kidogo. Yeah. And we are talking about um, this very first meeting, full meeting of uh, the Cabinet Committee on uh, Development, Implementation, and uh, Communication. And we're asking ourselves, even as uh, now we start this off, in terms of sustainability, do you think we have found uh, the solution to this and how can we shield uh, this committee and the work that they are doing uh, from the politics of this country? Yeah, thank you very much, Sam. Um, I want to say that um, it is important that we should have a center within government that seems to be working. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, there is no doubt about the fact that Matiang is extremely competent uh, he's not an individual who has been uh, accused of any form of corruption so far. Um, if you look at the standard newspaper on top there, you see why C plus may no longer be direct varsity mm -hmm. ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why it is a direct varsity t ticket is because it is associated with Matiani. And that is the same competence that uh, I believe he will bring on board. Mm -hmm. I've just, when I was coming, Really? Uh, <coughs> this is your first question, so I'm still in good time. <laughs> uh, uh, I had him apologizing on behalf of the NTSA because of the double registration. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's a, that's an accountable leader, mm -hmm. and that is what we want in government. You know, people who have gone into su service to, to serve. You know, there are two types of politicians, uh, some, mm -hmm. or public servants. There are people who live for politics. Those are people who are called to serve. And there are people who live off politics, people who go there to make money. Right. Especially former businessmen and such kind of individuals. So really, we really have a reason to believe that uh, Matiangi uh, is going to make a difference. I saw some CS uh, actually literally running to, to, to attend the meeting. In fact, I was also even with another one mm -hmm. who was saying he couldn't attend some certain function because at 7.30 uh, they were all supposed to be uh, meeting uh, Dr. Matiangi. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, it's a new paradigm shift. We need some center within government that holds. And uh, the good thing about it is that Matiangi is really not a politician per se. So he then represents the face of the technical arm of government which is really critical in terms of delivering uh, for the next three years before the, the, the term of President Uhuru comes to an end. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and he's been very candid because okay. uh, rent seeking and something that people do not talk very clearly, mm -hmm. clientelism, mm -hmm. uh, have really dogged government for a very long time. How do you explain a situation where some people lose money but nobody is responsible, or rather, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, people just fall. Uh, None is pursued. Yeah, so, so I think his, his uh, task uh, statement, uh, where he us that actually ministers are uh, you know, in cahoots with corrupt cartels, mm -hmm. is very, very much in order, and I think he needs to be supported. Okay, yeah. and I want to look at the story that is on page five of the Daily Nation where you see Matiang Matiangi takes charge of first cabinet committee meeting. Uh, after the meeting, he went to the National Transport and Safety Authority to unveil the new uh, board members. And while he was there, as you say, he apologized for what has been happening at NTSA. Um, but he also adds that I assure, th I assure you that we will clean it up, reorganize and ensure it provides the regulatory uh, functions required for them of them by the law. And I'm just wondering, uh, because there are these things that have been happening uh, before NTSA was moved uh, to the Interior Department. So really, what is this culture that we don't have, that we need to instill, because you cannot say that everything that is not working, it has to be addressed by uh, CS Matiangi? I think uh, uh, the other day there was a conference uh, in, in Bombers of Kenya mm -hmm. discussing corruption. Mm -hmm. Some of us have all the view that uh, the way to handle corruption is not through conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, we know who the corrupts are. We know that we need to add resources to ESCC and DPP. And therefore, it shows how rotten our agencies are been. And we give uh, CS Matiangi the benefit of doubt on addressing the issues that NTSA are facing. <coughs> mm -hmm. Because it is so sad, and uh, uh, I think as uh, Senator Maura said, accountability and of course, he did apologize to Kenyans, and I think that's a good thing because this double registration mm -hmm. uh, was one of the uh, vehicles that were being used by terrorists, and uh, many Kenyans lost their life in Dusit too sure. through terror attacks. And I think uh, this is very important, but now we need to build institutions because you have said if everything that goes uh, a miss or goes wrong, it needs uh, CS Matiangi to, to, to address. Mm -hmm. I think as, as, as a country, we should be trying to build strong institutions, say that regardless who is in office, be it uh, Moishi Mawanga or mm -hmm. Yusam mm -hmm. or myself or Senator Maura, the, the, the institution itself can, st because it outlives all of us, and therefore we need to build strong foundations based on integrity and transparency mm -hmm. and accountability so that we don't need uh, somebody, uh, because Matiangu will come and go, Some or anybody who is in office will come and go, but we must build institutions that outlive some of us uh, in terms of its integrity, in terms of transparency, mm -hmm. and therefore I think NTSA is a quite uh, uh, a clear uh, symbolism of uh, graft lethargy uh, I, I within the one of the agencies of government because it plays a critical role. Mm -hmm. You see there were many road accidents, there are double registrations. Before even it was removed, it used to be an agency of craft where they were just fleecing uh, motorists in the name of enforcing mm -hmm. the, the Mishuki rule. So we hope uh, with this issue, uh, especially I think the, 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 the sad reality is when some of the vehicles that were given double registration was involved in the terror attack. And I mm -hmm. think I agree with uh, CS Matia of course, he has ability. Some of us have doubted what he did in Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. We are yet to see the, the, the sad reality on the, 
perpetuated failures uh, mm -hmm. that during uh, the national examination when it's a CS of education. Mm -hmm. I know Kenyans have not seen the effects, but 10 years down the line, mm -hmm. they will feel the effects. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? Um, must we have CS Matenga intervening? What do we need to do with the other cabinet secretaries and officers of government? No, my, my own intervention here, and uh, I want to challenge Senator Cherage because he says corruption cannot be fought through conferences. But when, we, when government went for the people mm -hmm. who are corrupt, they came out and said a community was being targeted. When they said do lifestyle audit, they said no, some, commu some people are the ones being targeted. So I have to challenge him <laughs> that they, you cannot speak from both sides of the mouth. Mm -hmm. We have to fight corruption together, all mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. and, and when the, when the rubber hits the road, don't begin saying, that this is my community being targeted because people just steal alone. Mm -hmm. Even the com those communities do not benefit mm -hmm. when they get um, these things. But then, coming back to the question of NTSA, uh, my, own, my own view on the reason why this was probably moved is because of the thin line mm -hmm. between you know, the policies and enforcement you know, of, 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 of the traffic laws and so on. Because a lot of the enforcement roles fell within the docket of interior anyway, because it is the police mm -hmm. that were responsible for enforcement. Mm -hmm. So, because that line was so thin, I think mm -hmm. the decision was made mm -hmm. to just move it all and have it in one in one place. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think, that, and that I think is a is a good thing. So okay. that there is overall responsibility, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm, I'm glad that uh, C S Matiangi has taken the responsibility at the NTSA, sure. like he has done with many other departments, I am sure he will bring sanity, mm -hmm. restore sanity to the NTSA. Okay. And, 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 and I think the questions around education, I think the person who really brought sanity to the education sector mm -hmm. was C.S. Matiangi. I think when, when people were, one school could produce 300 straight A's, you know, and, and there was so much leakage of exams that we, we were all crippled, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. um, there was sanity restored. So when somebody uh, does well, I think it is important to say, yes, uh, you know, this has been properly, mm -hmm. properly done. But I think um, the NTSA issue is an issue of streamlining mm -hmm. the government operations. It makes sense, mm -hmm. and we hope that uh, uh, that can be dealt with okay. uh, expeditiously. Mm -hmm. uh, because... You know, when government officers do work, sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't know the implications of the shortcuts that they cut. For example, that person who was doing a double registration, mm -hmm. they did not contemplate that that would lead to yes. loss of lives in mm -hmm. the manner it did mm -hmm. at at Tusit. So mm -hmm. I think all of us have to reflect on our actions because if just by merely giving a, a num another number plate for a small you know, three uh, pieces of silver or whatever it is, you, you, you lose so many lives. And we, we wa what we want to see is the people who are responsible for that mess being brought to book and being right. charged alongside the other people who are charged with terrorism. Mm. Mm. These people should be charged with terrorism because they have their the, the actions have led, to, led yes. to loss of life. Okay, all right. I don't know whether Senator Moro, you have something to say about that.